Today we're going to learn how to fingerprint web apps and servers to identify which frameworks that they're using on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Today we're going to learn how to use several tools such as WebWeb or NCAT to fingerprint a website and we're also going to use some OSINT techniques to be able to identify which frameworks that a website is using. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article written by DRD, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. So the first um, website fingerprinting tool we're going to be going over is Netcat. And so Netcat has been around for decades now, and it's been a, um, a go-to tool for networking um, for any IT professional or any um, cybersecurity enthusiast. So um, we'll go over some basic commands with Netcat. And um, small disclaimer, um, Netcat, if you're running Kali Linux or something like that, it should be already installed on your computer. But if you're, um, it might not already be there. So in case it isn't, we can install it using the command sudo apt install, install netcat. And then this will be the command for um, a Debian based system, but I already have it installed. So that's that. Um, so the first command we're gonna use, if we wanna uh, scan um, a site like Google, we can use um, nc, uh, then the name of the website we're interested in. So google.com. And then we have to specify the port number that we're going to be scanning. And because we're interested in like the forward facing website, we're going to be specifying port 80 because almost every website uses port 80 for their um, forward facing features. So we're going to specify that. And after you press enter, you um, nothing will happen, but don't worry. That's just a feature of Netcat. So now we have to specify what we want to do with google.com port 80. So we're going to do an HTTP get request. So to do that, you just type in get then forward slash space and then HTTP slash 1.1. And then, and then you're going to have to specify the host. So I'll do host google.com and then press enter two times and then it'll get your results. And so as you can see, we have a lot of information here. Um, the HTTP response code is 301 just because uh, Google is using HTTPS. So all the data is encrypted, but we also have other interesting uh, information to be gathered. So we know that the server that Google's using is um, not a surprise Google web service. I believe that's what it stands for. Um, it's basically Google's version of Amazon Web Services. And then there's some other stuff like we get a, a HTML headers and we learn some inf useful information from here. But another tool uh, we can use to gain some even more information is WebWeb. So let's get out of this. And so again, if you're using Kali Linux, you probably already have WebWeb installed. But in case you don't, you can use um, sudo apt install WebWeb. And I'll take care of that. And I already have it installed, so we don't need to worry. So after you have what web installed, um, you can just go ahead and type it into your command prompt, and it will provide you a dump with like some basic things you can do with what web. And so it shows you some various features that it has available, such as how you can set um, a target, um, how aggressive you want the scan to be. So if you know a website is watching out for like constant scans, and they might block your traffic if they notice the same a, a, a request is being targeted from the same target multiple times they're going to block off that ip address and you can have some there's some options for verbosity and we're going to go over all these right now so to target a website using what web all you have to do is type in the what web command and then specify the uh, ip address or the website the website's name so in this case let's just do reddit.com and it's going to take a couple seconds to grab all the information it can and as you can see, we have some we have some useful things and we have some more um, information than Netcat was able to provide for us. So we get the same 301 response code because Reddit is HTTPS. But this time we get the um, IP address that is being hosted on. We're getting the location of the server, the name of the server. We're getting some information about the cookies that Reddit.com is using. And we're getting some plugins that they use. like some. So we know that uh, Reddit.com uses the HTML5 or they have some HTML5 content on there. And so we can get, we can use WebWeb to extract even more information if we use the, um, the verbose uh, option. So to use the verbose option, you can just press up on your um, keyboard to input the last command. And then we're just gonna um, add on tack V to the end of that. And then this might take a little bit longer because it's gathering more information, but I really like this um, verbose, verbose option because it provides us with one more information but it's also a lot more organized and a lot more easy to read, at least in my opinion. So as you can see, we have the same information. We have the cookies that is being used, the name of the cookies that are being used, web report, country of origin again, but this time it's a lot more organized. 
And in case we want to save all this information in a text file so we can look at it later, so it's not just like one time use thing in our command prompt, we can actually write all this information to a text file. So to do that, all you have to do is what web and then the name of the target. So reddit.com. And then we're going to use the uh, option tac tac log tac verbose. And then we're going to specify the name of the um, output file. So we're going to just call it reddit.txt. That'll be the name of the text file. And then as you can see, it's going to do the same thing over again. And then now if we look, we have reddit.txt. And now if we just cat reddit.txt to the terminal, and it's going to be the same thing that we got earlier with our verbose um, what web uh, query. And so that's all for what web. So the next tool we're going to be talking about is actually, um, it's not a command line interface tool such as Netcat or what web. It's um, actually a browser extension. So it's made by um, a software development company called Wappalizer. And so if you just navigate to their website and then go to free tools and browser extensions, um, you get directed to the browser extensions for three various Web, well, web browsers. And so the one we're going to be covering today is Mozilla Firefox because that is what I'm running on my computer. But the processes for Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, the installation processes should be pretty straightforward and the functionality is almost exactly the same. So if you just click uh, the Mozilla Firefox version, it'll take you to the Firefox browser add-ons. Then we can add it to Firefox. And then it's just going to tell you the permissions it needs. So that's basic stuff for the functionality that it provides. And if you care with that, we can add it. And it's just going to take you here and only let you know that the installation was successful. And one thing I did notice is that you do have to um, restart Firefox for in order for it to work. Um, it doesn't let you know this, so maybe not everyone has to do this, but at least in my case, I did have to restart Firefox. So I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, very quickly. And close those tabs. Close that. And we're going to open Firefox again. So now we can navigate to a website. So let's go to ESPN.com. And if we look in our um, address bar now, we can see this little logo that wasn't there before, and that's actually Wappalizer. So if we click Wappalizer, we just have to accept the fact that it does send hopefully anonymous information to the website we visit. And then with just one click, we have all this information about the different um, frameworks and different uh, plugins and web tools that ESPN has enabled. So as you can see, it has Twitter enabled because I'm sure they're um, showing off some uh, some athletes tweets or something like that. Um, and then we can see that it's built using the React framework and the Backbone framework. I'm not familiar with Backbone, but React is um, Facebook, I believe. And so with this knowledge, you can, if, if you notice that, if you know that there's an exploit for backbone.js um, 1.3.3, then you can apply it and then attack um, ESPN's web servers with that. And the same thing goes for React or any of these other um, JavaScript libraries or frameworks that they're using. And so just to check another site, we can go to say um, priceline.com. And then as you can see, the Wappalizer logo might change a little bit. And as you can see, there's different uh, widgets and frameworks being used by different websites, obviously. So we can know that Wappalizer is using Facebook, probably allowing you to log in with Facebook, something like that. It's using Google Fonts API. Okay, there's not much useful for that. But we, it's using New Relic Analytics, which is useful information to use. But the most, I think the most information, the most useful information that um, a hacker will get from Wappalizer are the, the, the backbone like it's being built on. So the frameworks, the libraries, those will show you um, the susceptible vulnerabilities that a certain website has. So the last two technologies that uh, we're going to be covering are built with, are actually um, two websites. So um, we've already covered command line tools and uh, web browser extension, but now we're just going to cover some public OSINT tools. So this first one built with actually really like a lot. So um, we can go ahead and enter a website and it's going to immediately tell us what frameworks and everything else it uses. So let's go ahead and put in price line again. So we can see um, the technology profile tells you almost everything you need to know. So it, what services and tools that it uses for tracking. So Google Analytics, this is some stuff that uh, Wappalizer didn't even tell us. Google Analytics, almost every website uses that for ad services and similar things. Uh, Web Trends, um, the widgets it uses. So it uses some Adobe features, Google Font, oh, wow, COVID. I'm sure like the travel industry is really affected by the coronavirus. So it 
Let, and, and you can actually click, um, it provides a hyperlink, you can click it and you can learn some more about how popular these certain tools are and it gives you a little bit about what it does. And as you can see, it's obviously something that's grown very recently. But let's go to something more um, well known and established, like PHP, the PHP framework. So Facebook is built on, it's been around forever. And you can actually, it's that kind of interesting to see the growth and the fall in popularity over time. So PHP has seen a steady increase in usage. And this is useful stuff for a hacker to know because it's important for like a hacker to understand and be aware of what technologies are popular at a given time and which ones are falling out of favor. So while Adobe Flash, for, for example, Adobe Flash is something that is extremely, extremely unsecure and extremely exploitable, but almost nobody uses it anymore because of the fact that it's extremely unsecure. So it's not really a technology that um, someone who's interested in hacking should devote much time to understanding just because I'm pretty sure by the end of this year, it's gonna be completely phased off of the internet. And then something like PHP, which has, it's used almost universally on the web. It's very useful for a hacker to know some PHP so they um, can understand the exploits that are being used. But you can notice that recently, at least, this trend line is starting to go down. It's been plateauing and now it's going down. So maybe it's less useful right now to get into PHP because in five, 10 years, who knows, this, this um, the usage plot could be all the way back down to 2001 level, or no, 2011 levels. And then, so the next site that was uh, built with, so now we can go to um, the second website we'll be covering today, which is W3Techs. And so we can put in um, an example website. So let's go with one of the ones that provided. So we'll go with uh, berkeley.edu, which is the second best public university in California. And it tells you basically what the website is, the uh, host website for the second best public university in California. Um, it tells you where the visitors come from. So obviously a lot are from the United States. Um, also a lot from India, because there is a fair amount of international students from that country. And you notice there's a lot of um, Chinese students, but there's a notable exception of China from here for obvious reasons. And then it'll show you uh, what technologies it's built on, just like built with, just like Wappalizer. So it's coded using PHP. And then one interesting thing is, so it tells you the version, but 87% of websites using PHP are using a newer version than 5.4.16. So Berkeley is actually a little bit behind on their update schedule. That's why they're the second best in California. And so it's similar stuff that we've already seen, but just presented in a different way. And oh, this one's actually kind of interesting. It shows you that it used to use Google for web hosting, but it's now using Amazon Web Services. Just because, yeah, it's Amazon Web Services taking over the web. Okay, and um, those are all the technologies that we're gonna cover for today. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle which features pen testing with OWASP ZAP, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. So we just saw four quick techniques to fingerprint a web app or an online server. This can be an essential step in a reconnaissance stage of a cyber attack. If you have any problems with this tutorial, you can check out DRD's article, which is linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up at Twitter at Nick Godshell, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.